Setting up a 23 gallon planted to pisto tank should be easy, right? Well, let's find out if it was. Here we go. So it wasn't a complete nightmare. I mean, I, I've been wanting an pisto tank for a long time and I didn't just feel like I had a place for one but I talked my wife into making a space in our bedroom, so that worked out. And then I've been watching these videos by this guy called MD Fish Tanks. Have you heard of this guy? He is incredible. Wow. But I think he might need to make some special ed videos for people like me. You think? Anyway, the tank arrived, and I think my biggest mistake was thinking that I could order fish for the next week, thinking that I would have time to get everything ready and then just plop the fish in. And this isn't exactly what happened, but let's go back and see how this story unfolds. This land and rimless tank was shipped in a crate that could make it through a tornado. It's like the Ark at the end of Raiders, complete with metal corners that aren't easy to loosen, by the way. Two people to lift this thing? Nah, that'll just be me since I have no friends. Now let's see what's in this baby. And just in case you don't know, epistogramma are dwarf cichlids from South America. If you have a three inch one, you have a big one. And they come in a dazzling array of colors. Beautiful. Almost no way for this glass to break during shipment. And that black thing in the middle is a mat to be placed under the tank during setup. And here she is. 23.6 by 15.7 by 15.7 inches, or 23 gallons. All right, so now it's time to get the background on the tank. And if you've noticed my other aquariums, you've probably seen that I used black ones. And the reason for that is I love the way it looks, but it also hides everything that I have attached to those aquariums. This aquarium isn't gonna have very much attached to it at all, so I'm gonna use something different. It's gonna be a frosted background, which I think looks incredible if done right. You will subscribe. Ding, ding. Well, that's not too bad for a rookie, I think, but now it's time to get on to the fun stuff. Here's the aquarium on our dresser in our bedroom. And above the tank, you can see on the wall the outlet where our TV used to be. I was able to talk my wife into getting rid of the TV since we haven't used it in a year and a half. And then I started thinking, well, if I can talk her into getting rid of the TV, maybe I can talk her into getting rid of the dresser too and replacing it with a fish stand. But she said, no, my clothes are in there, the dresser stays. Me. It's not ideal for a fish tank. It only has four contact points on the ground and that's a lot of weight per square inch. The fish tank with everything in it, the water and substrate should weigh about 300 pounds. And I actually plan on doubling that and getting another one eventually. I don't know if she knows that yet, but anyway, I took the drawers out. The middle seemed kind of weak as far as support goes. So I added some two by fours top to bottom to provide extra reinforcement there and also give it some more contact points along the ground. Anyway, let's get some sand in there. I may not have enough, so I may be running to the pet store to get another bag. Let's see how it goes. Let's get started. All right, not enough sand it looks like, so off to PetSmart I go. These mesh bags are filled with aquarium soil for plants, an idea I stole from MD Fish Tanks. I later found out he isn't doing this anymore, but it seems like a good idea if you ever want to rescape, which I just might. Spreading them mostly along the back to middle of the tank, since that's where I plan on putting all of the plants that will be rooted into the substrate. Next, I'm covering those up with the extra sand I had to go out and buy, which did set me back about an hour. As Khan said in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, which I'm sure all of you have seen, Time is a luxury you do not have, Admiral. And I needed that time because those new fish are arriving at my door any minute now. 
then topping off with some gravel I bought at PetSmart to give it a nice riverbed type of feel. Sprinkle that on pretty liberally, then kind of fading out towards the edge of the tank. So I think you can see what I'm going for here with the, most of the sand and gravel in the back of the tank on the left, and then just sloping down gradually towards the front of the tank or the right side of the tank. Eventually I'm planning on having another tank on this side and I'll just slide this one over and I'll have both of them have the, the deepest substrate in the center of the dresser and then just sloping outward to the ends of the dresser. So the next thing I wanna do is get some driftwood in here and I know at least one of them is gonna be floating. So I don't want all the driftwood floating at the top of the tank. So I'm gonna get some super glue and glue some rocks to them, keep them down at the bottom of the tank. So I just got the glue out and tried to uh, squirt some on there, just a little dab, and the whole thing just shot out. Oopsie! And now it's got this white stuff, but it's on the back side, and I, I got most of it off, but I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to add a little dab this time, a little bit on here, instead of squirting it everywhere. And then I'm going to put that rock just like that and let it hold for just a second. Okay, so I realized at this point that I'm definitely doing something wrong with super glue. I've seen Smallscape videos where she glues wet decor together, so it seems like this should be working at least some degree better than not at all. All right, I finally got it to stick. Oh, and off she goes. And I finally remembered gloves to keep glue off my hands. Cool. And now it sticks for real this time. This piece I wasn't even planning on using, Changed my mind this morning and I love it. I feel goosebumps. And I think I will love this branch and it's going to be protruding out the top of the tank like those beautiful tanks I'm attempting to emulate. If I can figure out how to get it to glue down and stay here. You know, if I were you, I'd probably just switch over to a real scapers channel because this is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I mean, a lot more difficult. And just kidding, please stay and subscribe. So I'm liking the way this is looking. I might have to move this one branch here a little bit uh, and I may do a little tweaking. This one here, this drift, piece of driftwood that's going towards this corner, I'm really liking. I wanna put a piece of, I wanna attach a rock to it here and back over here so that it stays in place because that thing is floating like crazy. And then this thing, of course, I'll have to adjust a little bit and glue it also. I'll probably end up gluing it to this branch over here or maybe against this piece of driftwood down at the base. This part, I'll glue right here against this so that it'll stay, because it seems to want to wobble. Yeah, I guess in this part over here, I'll have to fix with, I'll just smooth it out and put some more gravel over it. I guess that's why uh, people put in their driftwood and rocks and everything first before they put in the substrate. Oh, and by the way, this glue isn't going to hold once I add water. Just FYI. I think I have the driftwood in a pretty nice arrangement. I like how some things are sticking out of the top of the tank. That one might be a bit long, so I might end up cutting that, I'm not sure. A few places for the epistos to hide maybe under here and get some plants in there. I'm not sure I'm crazy about this big open area right here on the left side, so I might be adding something right in here. I'm gonna see how that looks. So I added this log right here, and I think that adds a little bit of dimension to the tank and may give the epistos another hiding place. I'm liking the way it looks. Anyway, I think I have it pretty much the way I want it. So now I'm just gonna fill up the tank up with water, get the plants in that need to be buried in the substrate, and then I'm gonna get the fish in because they're already here just waiting for me. Whoops, forgot the rocks. I found these rocks down by the river that runs fairly close to our house. This won't be the rock's final resting place, by the way. 
Now I'm just going to sprinkle some slightly larger gravel that I also found down by the river. Now it's time to fill her up. If only I'd known what was going to happen next. Oh crap! Help! Help! Okay, let me just interrupt for a moment. This is the part where I'm filling up the tank with my python hose. And then the part, the little section that I'm holding comes undone from the main hose. So it just flops on the ground and it's spewing water all over my bedroom floor. Has this ever happened to you? Well, anyway, let's get back to it. The rocks keep on coming and done from the driftwood and then the driftwood floats to the top. I try to put it back and then another piece comes up to the top. Next time I'm going to handle this differently. I'm going to take the time and make sure that my driftwood has soaked long enough to not be buoyant anymore. Yeah. And then when I super glue it, I'm gonna use the best super glue I can find, which apparently is Gorilla Super Glue Gel. And I'm going to super glue them when they're still dry and hold them a little bit longer than I was doing in this video. Okay. Back to it. Some Seachem Prime to get rid of the nasties in the water. A little bacteria in a bottle to kickstart the nitrogen cycle. This stuff here clears up the water in a hurry. Crystal clear in a day. A little something to take the edge off. And finally, some liquid fertilizer for those plants I'm trying so desperately not to send home to be with the Lord. Here come my 11 Super Blue Carry Tetras. Only gonna reach about one and a half inches in length. Little guys, but pretty and unusual. Not a schooling fish, but they do shoal. And here's my boy, the triple red cockatoo epistogramma. There are also two female epistos in with the male. Here's one now, not nearly as pretty, don't say anything, but still an okay fish and they'll keep my boy happy. They look like they're doing quite well in their new tank. Really pretty fish, amazingly brilliant red fins like fire. I almost went for some blue epistos, but I'm glad I went for the triple reds. Let's get some of the taller plants in here, shall we? This is the Seachem Tidal 55HOB. I put some seeded biomedia in it so the tank is instantly cycled and a package of Purigen to keep the tannins from turning the water brown. It's working so far. This is the Chihiros WRGB2 Pro. Super expensive and I'm not sure if it's worth it. Plus I'd rather have something like an AI Prime Light for this price. I built a cave on the front right for more hiding places for the epistogrammas. They love caves. These super blue tetras are busy without looking too busy, if you know what I mean. The males are the only ones that sport that sweet blue color. The females are more drab. The males and females are swimming at all levels of the tank, top to bottom. And here's my main man. He's gonna need a name, by the way, so if you have any ideas, be sure to post them in the comments. Several of my fish are named based on viewer suggestions, so I do listen to your ideas. Back there is where he likes to hide out so far. He moves around, but this is his safe zone. If you're thinking of getting some epistos, here are some basic guidelines for you. Minimum tank size should be about 20 gallons, mine's 23. You can keep about one male or a male and a female in a tank that size. You can keep more if you have a large enough tank to make sure that they each have their own caves a good distance from each other since they can be aggressive, especially when breeding. They pretty much hang out at the bottom of the tank, so tank mates should be smaller fish that mainly hang out at the upper levels of the tank. They love protein like bloodworms, tubiflex worms, black worms, but also some veggies are good to help keep things moving if you know what I mean. They prefer water a bit on the acidic side with temps around 80 degrees. They like sifting sand so make sure you have some for them to do their thing. They come in lots of different colors which means you'll have some cool options to choose from too. 
I mean, really cool options. So that's my new Episto tank. Let me know what you think. I think I did an okay job, but maybe you have some ideas where I could actually rearrange things to make it look even better. Also, don't forget I'll be getting a new tank the same size and put it on the dresser next to it. And I'm not quite certain 100% what I'm gonna put in that, so maybe you have some suggestions for me. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.